Hi, you're at MajorMixing.com and today we're gonna talk about the main principles of vocal editing, things you should do and should not do while editing and to find out about some common mistakes people usually make. Also, you'll get a few tricks from me that I learned while editing thousands of vocal stems for the last 12 years. Well, first let's talk about what vocal editing is. It's a process when you choose the best take after recording, time and pitch correct those takes, clean them out, and build the whole vocal idea of the song. So first, we start with the step called comping or compiling. Imagine that these are your takes, you have a stack of them. The main goal is to find the best sounding line in every part of the song. What I would do first is logically and visually divide the takes I have into smaller parts. So we have the whole phrase here. This one is the whole phrase too. You can actually divide it even into smaller parts, but start off with something like a whole phrase. After you have divided a whole stack of vocals, start listening to them one by one. Go vertically through the stack so you can really compare what sounds the best to your opinion and just colorize the parts you like. After you've marked those takes, you might want to listen to them in the context of a song, to check if they really sound like part of the same line. After colorizing the best parts, I usually move them to the track that I call something like lead vocals or best take, whatever. This will be the actual lead vocal of a song. You can make slices of the vocals as small as you need, just remember, the smaller the part, the more problems you might get sewing it up and the less natural it might sound. Speaking about the tricks here, in some cases the word might just sound perfect, but there's only one sound that spoils it. For example, the vocalist sang th instead of s. It was just a mistake that we didn't pay attention to while recording. So we just cut this s sound from another take and glue it to our golden one. Sometimes the t or d sounds might be too harsh. In this case, you might want to use the clip gain option or intentionally decrease the volume of T or D or automate the volume curve. In case, when the volume makes the sound less harsh but dull, you can try to drop the pitch of T or D or any other consonant by a semitone. But listen to the take again and make sure that the changes you've made are not noticeable. Speaking about the mistakes in comping, the biggest one is never using crossfades or fades. In most of the cases, a lack of crossfade causes a click or a pop sound in the place where you glue the takes. It really is a big pain to treat those clicks after you have already consolidated the vocals and the engineer is already mixing the song. So always remember about the crossfades. Next is the breath. A good thing to do is to cut out all the breath sounds from the lead vocals and place them on another track, so you could treat them separately. It solves a lot of problems in future. I also cut out all the breaths from all the background vocals. Everything that is not a lead vocal shouldn't have breaths. If the whole stack inhales and it happens not simultaneously, it just trashes the sound of your lead vocal. Every time the part of a take ends or you cut something, develop the habit of fading. Fading in and fading out is a must while you comp the vocals. This is essential if you want your editing to be like the one of a pro. Next is time correction. Time is essential when it comes to groove. To edit timing, I prefer using warp editing with warp markers. First I just set the markers. To be precise and avoid mistakes, place every warp marker at the beginning of the phrase and at the end of it. I usually set 4 markers per one bar. Setting markers beforehand is efficient, cause if you move this part here, the part after it stays in its place. Otherwise, your actions in one part of the take might affect same other part that was originally in the right place. And you will do more job. Time also can be corrected without stretching. You can close the editor for now and just cut the take in small parts like we did while comping. Now you can move those parts to the places you need and then put crossfades. This also works with new line the background vocals with the lead vocal. Pros, no stretching artifacts at all. Cons, unpredictable things like clicks, pops, doubled consonants might appear in the places of crossfades. Be careful with that. After time correction of the lead vocal is done, it is time to see if everything is in sync. 
Imagine that the word in lead vocals ends with a ST sound, like here on a bar 16. The same word in one of the tracks of background vocals is longer or shorter and you hear the doubled ST sound. This is what will definitely distract you from the pleasant listening to the song. That's what a lighting is for. There are a lot of third-party applications now like Vocaline or Revoice Pro. They do the job almost perfectly. Some DAWs have this function built in, like the Align function here in Cubase. The apps might spare you hours of the time though, but you should be careful to check the results of its job. The algorithm of aligning is simple. You just need to make the image of one take correspond to the image of another take or so-called guide. Let me open two takes in the editor where we were setting the warp markers. Here I can make both of them visible and pick the take I will work with. So, here I see that this is the place where the takes are not in sync, so I set the warp markers the same way we did while time correcting the lead vocal. Now I just start making this image correspond to the image of a guiding take behind it. And that's it. With this technique you can align any kind of vocals and make it sound perfectly in sync or in a slightly loose manner. Things to keep in mind here. Avoid overstretching and make the artifacts less noticeable. Now the time has finally come to pitch correct. Pitch correction is when you move the notes that are not in pitch to the notes that's supposed to be there according to a melodic idea and a scale of a song. We can't draw emotions, but what we can add it is the pitch. No matter what tool you use, be it Melodyne or Flex Pitch in Logic, Vary Audio in Cubase, the main rule for pitch and time correction is to make it as less noticeable as possible. Unless you intentionally want to make vocals sound like it was corrected. Using autotune with a lower tune speed after the correction is done in some genres of music is a good idea too. It helps to polish the vocal pitch to its perfect state. Things to look when pitch correcting. The blob is not always a note that vocalists sang. It is an average position that the analyzer gave us. Or, to put it simple, the closest note to the one that should be there according to a scale. The way I treat the blob is I cut it into smaller parts according to the line inside the blob. The drifting line is the actual note the vocalist sang, so when you see that this line is out of the blob, that means that the note in that particular place has changed. So I cut it to see what note is there and also this gives me the opportunity to treat it like a separate note. Sometimes I even fix vibratos this way. What mistakes can you do while pitch correcting? Well, the drifting line should be as smooth as possible. It definitely should not break when you move the notes. If it breaks, you can always pull one of the corresponding parts of the blob or use a drift tool to smoothen this drift line if you work in Melodyne. If the note is in its place, don't touch it. The less we touch the vocals here, the more natural it will sound. Don't move the consonants. Try to avoid touching them in any case. If there is a consonant in the blob with the note you must correct, separate this consonant from the blob. Only then you can move the note. The problem here is that all the sibilant sounds get this unpleasant buzz appearing when moved. We don't want that to happen. Practice with using different approaches to correct notes. Straight pitch if the vibrato is too wide, but don't make it too straight and unnatural. Use drift tool, or in my case here in Vary Audio I can just pull the blob at its angles to correct the drifting line. After everything is done, make sure that all of the fades and crossfades are set. All the takes are in sync and everything sounds clean and tidy. If it is, you have done it the right way. If you found this video useful, feel free to hit the subscribe button, like and comment. If you want your vocals to be professionally corrected for you, hit the link below to go to majormixing.com and find out more about our services.